are Jethro Tull, a band without Martin Barr. A few days ago, I did a video concerning Jethro Tull's new album to be released next year, 2020. This is titled The Zealot Gene. Looking at the comments posted about the video on the various Jethro Tull forums, many were positive, but many people were not. Their reasons being, one, Ian's deteriorating voice. Two, after a gap of over 20 years, could Ian Anderson come up with a great album, a bunch of songs that would deserve to be called Jethro Tull songs. But most of all, Jethro Tull wasn't Jethro Tull without guitarist Martin Barr. So let's have a look at some of those issues, starting with Martin. And as the man once said, spin me back down the years to the days of my youth. Back in the late 60s, right through to about 1980, I don't think there were many bigger, almost fanatical Jethro Tull fans other than myself. In less than six years, I saw the band going from playing small clubs and pubs to playing massive stadiums and becoming one of the biggest concert drawers in the world. It was an exhilarating and sometimes exhausting ride. We went from the blues, rock, folk, classical, stand-up and benefit to the heavy rock stroke folk of Aqualung to the outright prog of Thick as a Brick and a Passion Play right through to the progressive folk, for want of a better term, of Songs from the Wood, Heavy Horses and Stormwatch and more time changes than you'll find on a British Rail timetable. I must admit though, something inside of me died when Ian let go of the services of John Evan, Barrymore Barlow and Dee Palmer. I loved those guys and it was the last time I felt Tull were truly a band. Don't get me wrong, I loved A, Under Wraps, Crest of a Knave, Broadsword, Roots and Branches, but it felt like that was the last time Jethro Tull were truly a band. Over the last 40 years, I've seen Jethro Tull on the odd occasion, and though those shows were always enjoyable, they never reached the heights of those 1970s shows, where the band were operating on not just another level, they were on another planet. They were just amazing. But through all of Tull's lineup changes, Martin Barr remained by Ian's side. And as a guitarist continued to develop, change and grow. Even back in the early 70s, when during my visits to Tull's record company in London, I was constantly asking, when is Martin going to do a solo album? Come on, he must do a solo record. I felt back then he had a great album in him. Martin Barr was the perfect foil for Ian Anderson. Wherever Ian took Toll's music, Martin was right there every step of the way. Martin Barr. I've done bits and pieces on albums. Sometimes it's a riff, sometimes it's a little segment of music. I don't mind taking a small role in the writing and a larger input into the arrangement and playing. Personally, I think Martin underplays his contributions to Jethro Tull. Even though he reportedly didn't care too much for a passion play and found it unnecessarily complicated, he stuck with it and delivered one great performance night after night. Martin Barr was all about doing whatever was needed for the band. He even apparently helped Jeffrey Hammond learn the more complicated bass parts he was given. But take a listen to Martin's guitar solo on 1974's Backdoor Angels from Warchild. That sounds to me like a whole shed load of frustration and fed upness. Now, I was never clear on how or why Martin Barr was given the elbow from Jethro Tull. But during interviews in 2011, Martin stated there were no current plans for future Jethro Tull work. And in 2015, he said, it's important that people realise there will never be a Jethro Tull again. There will be two solo bands, the Ian Anderson Band and the Martin Barr Band. And long may they exist and long may they enjoy playing music. Ian wanted to finish Jethro Tull, 
wanted to stop the band completely. But now, in 2021, we have Tull with a new album. Is it Tull without Martin? For me, no. While I like Ian's solo stuff, it's kind of bogged down in a certain style. And it's enjoyable, but it feels like it's stuck in a kind of a rut. Having Martin there would add so much to the proceedings, bringing in his unique talents, adding bits here and there, composing, arranging. And if that's not possible, then on the zealot gene, Mr Anderson has to allow the other members to contribute. So that the album has much more of a band identity. And it's great all this file sharing, musicians adding their parts at home, and it might work for some bands. But Ian has to get the band in the studio and play, jam as much as possible. When Tull were truly great, it was all about the interplay, the almost telepathic interplay the band had between each other. The band spent hours and hours, days and days playing, and that was an integral part of the Tull magic. So I think the message is from myself and most of the fans, bring Martin back. Lift Martin's bar, as it were. Now I'd love to hear your comments, what you feel about this, whether I'm right, whether I'm wrong, how you see Toll going forward, because Anderson seems to be planning some future albums past the Zealot Gene. So, like I said, I'd love to hear your comments. But most of all, Stay safe, stay well, look after yourselves and please subscribe to the channel because it helps us build for the future. Take care, God bless.